This medal represents what the country has always stood for, sacrifice. My name's on the back of it, but it doesn't mean it belongs to me. I'm just a caretaker. It didn't matter where you were from or who you were, we looked out for one another. I felt this is what a soldier's supposed to do, and I still feel that way. But this medal's not mine. That belongs to uh, those kids who never grew up to be grandfathers. And I just hold it in trust. The veteran broadcaster Paul Harvey is famous for saying there are two tangible symbols of sacrifice representing the ultimate offer of one's life for others. One of those symbols is the cross of Christ and the other is the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's likely that when he first uttered those words, the Medal of Honor was more widely recognized than it is today. But to those who have heard the stories of brave American service people who, in the heat of combat, performed astonishing acts of selflessness to aid their embattled comrades, that symbol shines as brightly and significantly as any other in American life. Signed into law by President Lincoln in 1861, the medal was first intended for Navy personnel, but soon after a similar decoration was established for the Army. The medal was bestowed much more frequently in those days, but by the time an Air Force medal was established a century later, the existence of other military decorations made the Medal of Honor our nation's highest and rarest military honor. Fewer than 3,500 Americans have ever been chosen to wear this hallowed emblem, many of them posthumously. But despite its rarity, the ideals it symbolizes are alive in each and every person who serves this nation in uniform. Namely, the capacity for courage, selflessness, and sacrifice that are the hallmarks of service. There can be no doubt, as we pause to take stock of our lives as Americans, we can find profound inspiration in these stories and perhaps recognize some of those prized characteristics in our civilian lives as well. You know, the military is just an unsung rule. We don't leave no friendly behind. We don't, we don't leave our brothers behind. And uh, it was um, in, in September 1969. Exactly, except on the 17th. Uh, it was just a routine search and destroy operation. We did them all the time. Was, uh, we worked hard. And this one I felt was going to be, had the feeling it was going to be a little different. So we moved through the village into the wood line. And that's when everything started to happen. And the next thing I knew, I got a call that the team sergeant was killed. And my captain was severely wounded and talked to him and uh, he wanted to stay and I said no, he would have to leave, he met her back, because he was seriously wounded. And then I got another call that uh, the next senior enlisted was seriously wounded, he had to be her back. And they were met back out, but they couldn't no one could get to the team sergeant's body. And that body has to be recovered because we can't leave him behind. Got the body, I took two volunteers with me. Got the body, I turned him over to check, and he was KIA. I gave him a, a small prayer. And uh, they opened fire again, and uh, the two people with me got wounded. I didn't get hit. I took them out, couldn't take the body out. So I had to come back again. So I got two more volunteers. And I went back in. And this time we were able to get the body. But while we were getting the body, you got to remember they're still shooting. And the map case come out of his pocket. So after we got out, I had to make a decision to go back in again to get the map case. And I made my mind up I was going in. And I was going to throw a hand grenades as long as I could throw. He got the map case. Uh, and I got shot in the right chest. And he was he was able to get out. Well, I'm, I'm there now. And But I had gave them instructions not to come back and get me. But I continued to fight. 
and I got behind a tree for protection, a palm tree, and it was taking bullets in the back of the tree. But I got shot in the right arm, and I didn't even realize it. I think I got shot in the right, the left hand, the left ring finger. And the only thing I could do, I got my weapon, I started to fire. The country's coming uh, to terms with uh, some oversight. And, uh, you know, that could have been things that influenced that in the past, and they were correcting it now. And I'm, I'm making for a rare proud uh, of that. The only thing that I'll say is I hope the process continues. Uh, I don't hold anything against anyone. Times change, times go forward. Uh, uh, we look back to correct some of the things. You know, so that I feel good about it. I want to thank everyone for attending this momentous and historic event. It is my pleasure, but most importantly, it is my honor to introduce a true American hero, Command Sergeant Major Benny Atkins. Command Sergeant Major Atkins was drafted into the Army in 1956 at the age of 22 from Warica, Oklahoma. Sergeant Major Atkins completed initial training at Fort Bliss, Texas and was assigned to a garrison unit in Gießen, Germany. He had a follow-up assignment to Fort Benning, Georgia uh, with the 2nd Infantry Division. He volunteered for Special Forces in 1961 and served more than 13 years with 3rd, 5th, 6th, and 7th Special Forces Group for three non-consecutive tours. On this tour, then Sergeant First Class Atkins distinguished himself during 38 hours of close battle combat and 48 hours of escape and evasion against enemy forces March 9th through 12th, 1966. Um, you've been selected to receive the highest military honor that the president can bestow on one of its own. What was it like to receive that call? Uh, basically, it's a very humbling experience to uh, be recommended for the Medal of Honor. And it's, um, uh, what I attribute this to is not my action, but the actions of the other 16 Americans that were with us in the battle at Camp Ashow, and especially the five that, the Americans that paid the ultimate price. Is this the toughest battle you saw in Vietnam, or were there others? Uh, that was. This was the toughest ba battle I personally saw, but I'm sure there were others, and uh, many of those may have been much tougher. And this was uh, this was the uh, the night that it looked like they had to run us down. The North Vietnamese soldiers had us surrounded on the little hilltop, and uh, we everything started kind of getting quiet, and we could look around, and all at once, all we could see. There's some eyes going around us. Well, a uh, tiger stalked us that night. We were all bloody. And in this uh, jungle, the tiger stalked us, and the North Vietnamese soldiers were more afraid of the, of the tiger than they were of us. So uh, they backed off some, and we were gone. <laughs> Just graduated basic training. Do you have any uh, words of advice as they begin their career? Uh, my advice to them is uh, whether they're uh, a, a one-time soldier or whether they're a career soldier, to absolutely do the best that they can and accomplish the most that they desire to accomplish. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this uh, question and answer period with a statement from Sergeant Major. Um, Sergeant Major, you want to? Close. I can say this is a very humbling experience uh, to go through and uh, I want 
to uh, I want to thank the m m uh, m members of the news media for their uh, courteous attention and uh, please uh, please uh, support our current military and uh, uh, thank them for their services and uh, like to look over here and tell them if, uh, if you're going down range just keep your head down. <laughs>